Welcome back everybody, this is Chad with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we have a very, very special video for you, likely one of its kind on the internet, okay? We have the most controversial 1022 in existence in my opinion. Uh, it's known as the Ruger, the IDF 1022 Ruger, also known as the kneecapper. All right, we'll, we'll kind of dive into this and we'll tell you all about it, but this is a really cool integrally suppressed 1022. We'll take a few shots at 50 yards with a standard 10 round mag and then we'll move on and uh, give you a little history lesson. This is gonna be a lot of fun. All right, take a couple of head shots here on our D28 just to confirm. All right, coyote head shot. Wow, man. <laughs> making short work of that. All right, we got that little small spinner over there. All right, I'm gonna go for the big target and then I'm gonna go for the small one. All right, I'm, I'm looking. Okay. Wonderful. All right, let's go for the top. I got two rounds left, I think. That's accurate. Okay. That's it. All right. All right, so as I mentioned, this is this is probably one of, if not the only, like clone of one of these rifles that I've really ever seen. Um, these guns were used by the IDF back in the late '80s. Um, they needed a less lethal option to disperse crowds during the first Intifada. Okay, the Palestinian uprising. Um, there's been a lot of turmoil over in Israel over the years uh, between Israel and all its surrounding enemies. I mean, basically everyone around the country wants to destroy them. I mean, it's, it's just the bottom line. So the military has done a lot of things over the years that are highly controversial and the weapons that they've used basically just mirror that controversy. Um, early on, these were touted as a less lethal option, something that they could use to uh, disperse crowds and well um, instigators you know during some of the uprisings and things that had a little bit more potency than the like rubber munitions and such that were used that are a typical less lethal munition um, so they stepped up to a 22 caliber 1022 and they bought a quantity of these in the late 80s direct from Ruger and they would bring them in and they would convert the stocks they would shorten the barrels add integral suppressor so it's a full-length integral suppressor and this one was custom done by Liberty Suppressors up in Trenton, Georgia. Um, I sent them this project a while back and um, they did a fantastic job. It's got a custom mono core stainless steel baffle stack that can be removed. Uh, this is an SBR and you know has a suppressor so it's a two stamp gun but I can take the can off, dip it, clean it, whatever I need to do. It's got a long titanium tube, uh, suppressor 17 inches in length. So it's, it's about as close a facsimile to the original rifles as I can make and that Liberty could do. And they did some awesome uh, French knurling on it. I mean, it's just a fantastic example. Um, but these guns were used early on and then people started getting uh, hurt to the point where, you know, legs had to be amputated, uh, people were paralyzed, kids were killed in some cases. So hence the controversy, okay? And later on, like in the late 90s, I believe, um, forgive me if, if the timing's a little bit off, there's not really a whole lot of information out there about this particular rifle and how it was used. Um, and there's a lot of conflicting data as well. But there's a few great articles I'll link in the, in the description box below if you guys wanna do some further reading. But um, basically after all the, uh, all the injuries and such and, and when the controversy was really rife, um, the gun was labeled as a lethal firearm and its use uh, for those type of like less lethal situations and crowd control was reduced. Um, but as far as I know, these guns have been used in like clandestine operations in the past, you know, to take out sentries, to take out dogs, lights, things like that very quietly. I mean, you guys can hear how quiet this rig is. Um, I did put it on the meter preliminarily and at the ear, we're talking right in the low 120s, 120, 122 at the ear, uh, at the muzzle, you know, 115 to 117. So pretty typical for a 1022 in this fashion. You really can't get past that clack clack of the bolt, but a very, very quiet rig. Uh, Eric was shooting this thing the other day and I was about 50 yards away 
and you can hear absolutely nothing except a tiny little like pin drop almost you know just from the action but um, just to give you some further specs on this rig uh, this is an original uh, 1972 1022 so it's a little bit older than the 80s models that they would have used but I wanted um, a 1022 that had the old alloy trigger guard because um, this is a little bit better quality um, set up than the new polymer guards. I'm not really a huge fan of those and I wanted to keep this as original as possible. So I did a little horse trading with Eric for one of his uh, grandpa's old 1022s. Uh, and like I said, this is an SBR. This has been a project, it's been about four or five years in the making. So I've been on this for quite some time trying to get it done. But um, we've got uh, the receiver and the first little bit of the barrel is steel bedded. So I did steel bed this in. So it's uh, definitely a sleeper style build. Uh, the trigger mechanism is a drop-in from KID, so very, very high-quality single-stage trigger with about a two-and-a-half pound pull. Um, you know, no over-travel, just a fantastic trigger. The barrel is a standard 10-inch uh, Ruger Charger barrel that Liberty took and turned down to accept the uh, rear cap here. It's just a slip fit, tube slides over, and then the front cap is threaded on and it tensions the whole system together to help improve accuracy. Uh, we've got kind of an original style, uh, simple Harris bipod up front. Uh, it's one of the mid-tier mid uh, style that looks like what the IDF has used over the years. Seems like they use more of the taller bipods. Um, I've got an Area 419 30 MOA base on top, and we're running a uh, Leupold Mark IV 3.5 to 10. Uh, this has got a TMR reticle in it, got a flatline ops uh, bubble level in here, and today we're running the uh, Kessel HUD. So, this setup's a little bit more modern than what the IDF would have used back in the day. Um, but I've always been fascinated with, you know, Israeli firearms. And you guys may remember the video we did on the Israeli uh, pilot survival rifle, the AR-7. Um, if you guys want further details on this, just go check out that video. But um, I don't know why, but it's just the, the weaponry that the military in Israel has used over the years is extremely unique. And it's second to none, really, in, in how clever they are with you know, the firearms that they put together for very specific purposes. But, you know, just it's just adding to the mix uh, with this Ruger. And like I said, I, I haven't seen very many people um, with a similar setup than this, other than maybe a couple of folks that have done like airsoft replicas. And, and, and really, in, in all truthfulness, what I've seen out there has not been very good quality. I mean, it's not really true enough to the original for my taste, but um, <laughs> you see this, uh, mound on the back this is some goon tape over a little bit of foam you know just real haphazard just trying to keep it all original but uh, let's take a few more shots out to uh, hopefully 309 yards it's a little bit on the extreme range for uh, 1022s but um, well 22s in general but uh, there's a lot of reports of you know crowds being dispersed by IDF soldiers out to ranges up to maybe 200 250 yards and at those ranges, you know, you go to throw a rock or something and then you feel a sting and you have no idea where it came from. And the idea was, all right, an instigator trying to, you know, rile up a crowd or whatever. He gets taken out of the fold by being shot in the leg or something like that and incapacitated. And then two or three other guys have to tote him off. So you're getting more people out of the fight, trying to quell the crowd. That was the general idea. Yeah, as bad as that may sound, I mean, it worked. So let's try a BX-25. And a lot of the old videos and stuff I've seen and some of the uh, and some of the photos, this is exactly the setup that was used. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, it's pretty dang close, Chad. <laughs> it's cool, man. I I was real happy to get this thing finished. And like I said, Liberty did a fantastic job of this sucker. So right, I'm gonna bump up to. Um, Two mils, we're at 1.93 to get out to 100. We've got a D28 out there. Go for and, the bolt. Uh, yeah, we've got a few other challenging targets, and I, it, I'm just gonna shoot a few rounds. I've got a few BX25s loaded up, so. Yeah, and I really like this rig, Chad, and uh, just one thing I wanted to, to sort of add is I know that Kyle did the Integral 1022 for you. Yeah, that was the EOS. The EOS, yeah. and I really love that gun, I, I do. But there's something nostalgic about this that can't be denied, for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, we got some. Uh, we got one of those little spinners out there at 100 as well. Awesome. So, all right. So we're at, um, yeah, right at 100, 100 yards. I'm showing 1.93 elevation. Um, so what we're running is some of the CCI green tag. 
Uh, I actually shot some Cinerex in this rig and it did not like that match ammunition. Uh, CCI standard and the green tag, which is kind of like a, it's like a CCI standard velocity that um, kind of pitted the ace. So they took these lots and marked them green tag and it's sort of like, uh, like a low end match ammunition, but the gun loves it. Okay. And this is just a standard, uh, you know, factory charger barrel. It's not even, you know, a, a true match barrel or anything like that. And it, it shoots quite adequately well. So hopefully we'll be able to show that. Yeah. As long as I can do my part. Do your thing, man. All right. I'm right, back so. here behind Chad on a Leupold Mark IV spotter with a TMR reticle. Okay. All right. Let's see. All right. I'm going to go for the D28. And I got a couple of impacts there already from testing earlier. I'm just going to aim for that cluster. Go ahead. A little bit of wind to contend with. <laughs> All right, a couple of headshots. Yeah. I could see where, you know, that would take out a kneecap. <laughs> I mean, that's a four inch. It's target. terrible to think about, but well, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's, that's how they were used. Yeah. I mean, look, we're just citing history, guys. We're not suggesting yeah. people go around kneecap folks with a 22. All right, a few more headshots here. Wow. All right, I'm going to do like a double tap. Fantastic. <laughs> All that right, second that. double tap you did, Chad, both <laughs> those rounds landed in the same hole. Yeah. They were right on top of each other. All right, let's try that uh, swinger. I'm going to try to get two rounds on it before it swings. Let's see. Do it. Wow. <laughs> All right, the top target, mm -hmm. that thing's like probably two inches. Over the top. Okay. Center. Good. Wow. All right. I mean, dude, for a ten, <laughs> especially for a 1022. I mean, I, I just don't recall any of my 1022s being that accurate. Well, it's a 10 inch barrel, so you know like what you say all the time about shorter barrels being a lot more rigid, right? And this is a tension setup too, so don't forget that the the cap is putting you know pressure on the barrel much like the like carbon fiber wrap barrels that are tensioned so it's just holding everything together and making the barrel even stiffer so usually the stiffer the barrel is uh, you know better the harmonics are and wow the better the accuracy that's so. impressive dude okay. i love it and uh i'm it, gonna have to have one of those built now <laughs> probably a lot of people will after oh, this oh man i Dave, know that's Dave so is, cool dave is gonna get like a million phone calls like stop <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're gonna go to 156 and that's okay. 4.75 yeah we do have oh, a gopher geez. target out to 156 so that might be a challenging one to try yep. to hit and we got just a teeny bit of wind popping up let's see what we got here i mean i guess uh, that gopher is about the size of a kneecap what yep. do you think <laughs> I'm going to keep making that reference, I know. That's a five inch target. All right, so this is getting into the range that a lot of these inc incidents occurred at from what I've read and understood. You know, like standoff ranges, like 150, 200, 250 yards. So, well, I don't think somebody could throw a rock this far. No. I, th and that's, that's part of the controversy. Like, were they really a threat? Uh, I mean, ooh. Man, I, I'm, it, I'm not sure that I, I think someone with a rock at this distance would be a threat to me. No. But man, I'm telling you, like they are an island in the middle of enemies and it's just insane. And they do what they have to do. The choice I mean. of equipment certainly is intriguing. It is. <laughs> it is. Oh, and you know, uh, I did read that um, uh, the IDF switched to some of the newer like SR-22 setups like the newer chassis style guns and um i also saw uh fab defense they make uh, a special 1022 chassis that i think a lot of these old wood stocks kind of got uh upgraded to um it's a really neat setup it's it's like maybe an aluminum uh bedding like a mini chassis inside the action beds in real well and then you've got full adjustability on the butt stock and everything you've got picatinny rail all around to modernize it and kind of bring it into this era um, be able to use lights, lasers, and all kinds of other gizmos. I mean, I think it's pretty cool. If right. there's anybody serving in the IDF now that can send us some pictures of some of the modern ones in the armory, we would love to see them. Oh yeah, I'd love to. If y'all have a minute, that'd be cool.
All right, let's see where I'm at on the D28. Tweak my parallax. All right. All right, here we go. Showing um, left hold of a tenth. So I'm just gonna. Yeah, you got a slight wind brewing, not much. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna hold very slightly. Yeah, I would just hold right over his left shoulder. Okay. I'm just gonna aim center mass. Go ahead. See where I'm at. Send it. Center mass. Dang, that was perfectly centered. Holy crap, Chad. All right, that three shot group just triangulated into about an inch. All right, I'm gonna go for the head. Okay. A little low. Yep, I see it. Perfect. Wow. All right, go for it. Yeah. All right, let's try just a body shot and then I'll move up to the head. You got it. Impact. You're in there. <laughs> Dude. All right, headshot. Oh, man. <laughs> you can see those projectiles flying right in there so slow. <laughs> wow. Dude, I... You know, it takes a lot to blow my skirt up, Chad. And that's pretty freaking impressive, dude. All right. Wow. That was 156 yards, 156 dude. 156 yards. All right, we're going right, to go to... now this is where it's going to get interesting. We're going go to go to 250. We're going to go to 251. Now, with with the 30 MOA base, uh, on, like, say, the Voodoo, for example, I've got a 30 MOA base, and then I have a 20 MOA one piece spur mount on it so i've got 50 moa total of elevation that you know i can add back into my optic more or less with this only having the 30 moa base on here and just standard loophole mark four rings i've only got about 10 m or 10 mils of travel in the optic so i have to just dial up i think actually i only have about nine mils yeah i've got 9.1 mils so i'm gonna dial it up to nine which is the max I can do there, and then I'm just gonna hold in the TMR reticle. I've got five extra mils of elevation there. So we, we're at two or a 10.23, all right? So I'm gonna give it an extra 1.2 mils, and I'm gonna send them in on that big plate down there. It's a 22 inch round, so it should be a pretty easy target hit, but then we've got a half size D28 at, um, at 309. So we're gonna try to send a few rounds in there as well with his last mag. And I just want to add too that this is great training as well because the TMR reticle I have in my spotter is the same as what he has, so Absolutely. I can give him instant corrections because yeah. I see what he's seeing. Absolutely. I have five mils of elevation in my spotting scope. All right, so it's giving me a 0.2 hold left, so I'm going to hold slightly left and send them in. Send it. Oops. Well, might help I load around. All right. Loading the guns louder than shooting it. I know. All right, ready? Send it. Well, might help if I actually have a magazine in, guys. Is this amateur hour or what? It is amateur hour. All right, bye. All right, <laughs> 251. You guys saw that before I did, so you're probably laughing at me right now. Send it's it. Okay. <clears throat> no call. Okay, nine. Thing. Oh, might help if I hold my 1.2. All right, let's try yeah, that. Unless it's shot real low. Yep. Just low, under the gong. Oh, that low? All Looks right. like me, it, yeah. Let me hold, hang on, one sec, okay. Uh, 10, yep. That 0.75 mil uh, low. On the bottom of the plate, you see it? Oh wow, that low? Yep. Okay. You're, you're so you are a half a mil from center to the right. Okay. And you are a half a mil low from center. All right. Let me try that again. So I'm gonna shoot a few rounds to get a um, an idea there, and then I may have to just do a, a muzzle velocity or a, a Cal DSF on the Kestrel. Same spot, lower right corner of the gong. Lower right corner. You're uh, 0.25 mils to the right of center, and you are 0.5 mils low okay. of center All right. on the dot. Okay, stand by, I'm making a correction. 
Just shy of center mass, send them. Do that again. All right, listen, you had a triangulation. Those last three shots triangulated on the gong into the size of an apple. All right, so. Perfect triangulation. All right, before we shoot 309, I am going to go over to the Kestrel, which I have on a tripod on the weather vane right now. And I'm going to uh, just quickly input a, a DSF. It's a drop scale factor. Uh, with shooting something like a 22, you can calibrate them at two, three, 400 yards and everything in between there will have a more accurate curve to it. Uh, it's just a way to kind of uh, confirm and uh, just uh, make sure that your data is spot on uh, with a given load. Because I mean, we're shooting 22 with a really poor ballistic coefficient. It's just a round nose flat base bullet, right? It's a, this is not an aerodynamically stable projectile. I mean, we're asking it to do quite a bit. So let me do that real quick and make the correction and then we will try to shoot 309 yards. All right, guys, I uh, updated the Kestrel, calibrated it. So uh, we were showing uh, 11.45 mils roughly instead of the 10.3 at 251. So it's giving me a correction of 15.43 at 309, so we've got nine mils dialed. I'm gonna hold uh, 6.5 roughly, and we're gonna send the rest of this mag in at 309 yards and uh, see what we can do. <laughs> All right, <laughs> here we go. All right, let's see. Wind, 0.25. There's really not a whole lot going down this tree row right now. Other than a lot of heat. <laughs> oh yeah, man, it is a lot of heat for sure. All right, that's five. Now, I've only got five mils in the optics, so I'm just gonna have to guesstimate, and I'm gonna hold up by the head and slightly left. All right, you ready? Send it. Hmm. Anything? I don't really see a lot. Try okay. again. I got it. Oh, yeah, I heard it that time. You might have hit it the first time, and I just didn't hear it. Looks like that was low. Saw okay. a splash underneath. Okay. Ah, got it. it looks like it's low on All the right. plate, kind of okay. towards the bottom. 6.5. Yeah, it should be about right. All right, hang on. I'm just going to send a few in. I'm going to try pumping this uh, spotter in a little further. Right. I've got it on 12 power. I'm going to try 40 power and refocus. Hang on. All right. Standing back. If I can see the uh, All right. Okay. Much better. All right. Go ahead. All right. All right. That was dead center. I can see that. Hmm. Yep. Huh. That one had a little bit more velocity to it. You could hear it crack down range. Mm -hmm. That was up near the bolt that time. Okay. It was kind of falling apart. I mean, yeah. I would say maybe the size of a pie plate. That's okay. All right, there's a little bit of a boil down there. Let me hold center. Oh, no, I'm out. All right, well. That proves the concept. It gives you the idea for sure. For sure. Um, so 250 yards, child's play. 300, having to kind of hold in no man's land eh, with this particular setup. And eh, probably keep it within about 250 yards. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as we did making it. Um, like I said, this project's been a very long time coming. I've been planning it for years and just finally was able to get around to it. And I'm going to give Liberty props again. They have always done some awesome custom work. I've had several friends that have done custom integrals with them before uh, that have been completely satisfied, like Ruger uh, 7744s and things like that. Um, they just turn out so amazing. And Dave and the guys do awesome work and just awesome, great people. Um, but I'm real happy with the way this rig turned out and uh, it's definitely gonna be in the collection for a long, long time to come. 
But uh, like I said, guys, go in the description box and you know check out some of these articles on this particular rifle if you don't really know about the history of it. It's a very interesting read. Um, but and an interesting piece of military history overall. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. We have a lot more on the way. We're finally getting back into doing a few rifle videos, so that's uh, a welcome change to the content that's been on the channel lately. And uh, it's harder for us to get down to the rifle range. Um, rifle range now it's quite a bit of a haul, but uh, you know we try to make the drive and uh, get this stuff taken care of so you guys can enjoy it. Um, hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. But if you want to support the channel, check out uh, Ballistic Inc. We always have some uh, new apparel coming out over there. Every purchase on the site goes directly back into supporting what we do here. And uh, you guys have a great day. We'll see you next time.